What's up guys, Apple released the first beta of iOS 14 to the registered developers. This is a really good day full of long awaited features and changes. So we're going to take a look at all the new home screen widgets and so much more. So let's jump right in. So starting with the new home screen. So at the beginning, it doesn't look that different, right? This is what I had in the past, nothing really changed. However, when you long press, you you get presented with this new thing. You have a new option up here, which opens up the all new widgets. So over here, you actually can choose from all these kinds of widgets, or you can select smart stack, which you can basically have different things and it uses machine learning to see which widgets you need the most throughout the whole day. So let's say we add this widget, as you can see, it shows up directly in our home screen so it moves down the apps or you can also take it edit home screen and you can just move it you can just for example move it into the middle or to the complete bottom or anywhere else on any other page so as you can see now it shows me this the fitness app now you can of course go into notes or into maps or into events or into your photos or the weather or anything else which just presents you with this for now however over time it's going to use machine learning to really see which ones you need the most however you can of course go into edit stack and here you can actually select which ones you want to have first or if you want to actually just like delete it or something like that so smart rotate you can turn that on so that it will use the machine learning to use that. Of course, if you go back into the widgets, you can select that I want the calendar, the small one or the medium one or the large one. So you can, of course, say, let's say I want this one. You can click add widget. It goes up here um, and this one moved over here. But of course, you can have these two widgets on the same page right next to each other or whatever. Um, and as you can see, we have the calendar now, which opens up the calendar directly for you. And it will show you the events as, as well as everything else. So of course, there are so many widgets to choose from. Third party will hopefully be supported soon, but for now you have weather, shortcuts, screen time, photos, reminder, anything like that. And my favorite one here is the battery section. So you can take the small one, but I really like this second one. So if you click add widget, it's going to show you the battery on the phone on my Apple Watch and I will just take my AirPods over here and if I open these up then it should show me also as you can see the AirPods and the case if there was not the fourth one it would actually show me the battery of both separate earbuds so that's a really cool one I really enjoy the battery section and you can add many other widgets as well and you can fill up the whole screen if you um, if you really like so that's the good thing here Next up, if you go all the way to the back, it will show you your app library. So this is of course sorted by Apple. You cannot customize this, but it does a really good job separating it into productivity, socials, lifestyle, creativity, and anything like that. And especially taking into account which apps you actually use the most. So those are the biggest ones and then the smallest ones are the ones you use the least. Of course, then if you click app library, you can sort through your apps in alphabetical order or you can actually search for an app for example uber and it's going to show you that one right there so this is another cool addition now a new addition is also you can now actually hide pages so if you long press okay you have this little thing showing up down here if you click on that it shows you all your pages. And for example, let's say you want to only keep the first one and hide the rest of them. So you can deselect them, click done, and now you, let's click done again, and now you have only one page. As you can see, that's it, and then just directly the app library. So then of course, if you want to re-enable it, just go back to clicking here, and then select all the pages again. Keep in mind, you have to keep at least one page. So let's click done, that's this. Then if you go to the left, the front page, you have this new looking widget page, which in the past looked a little bit boring, now it's more, it's a really nicer view, at least for now. Of course, third parties did not update yet, so um, this one will still look the same. However, of course, by long pressing, 
if you long press again you can go down here and edit and then choose the apps you want to add in your widgets and more like this now we can of course go into settings and the home screen settings where you can now actually select where your new app downloads will go. So either to the home screen or only the app library, as well as where you want the notification badges to show up. So you can of course toggle between these, that's a nice other feature. The next up is picture in picture. Now keep in mind, this doesn't work with YouTube, the YouTube app, because you need to have a subscription. However, it works with Safari videos or FaceTime and more like that. Now let's just take an example. Let's take an example. Let's go to videos from Apple and let's see just um, Apple events WWDC. So we can press on that video. The video will of course start up over here. And now if you go out, the video stays with you. You can drag on the video from one corner to the other, wherever you want it, or you can swipe it off to the side and it shows up like this while the audio still playing, if that's something you want. And then of course you can pull it back up and then close it all together if you don't want it. Now, of course, in the settings app, if you go into uh, general and then picture in picture, you can toggle this on and off if you want the picture in picture to start automatically. Now the control center got an update as well. As you can see, the section now features the home and your scene and your lights that you have in your home. So that's the new thing over here. Now you can of course customize this as well in the control center in the settings. So you can of course remove the home controls if you don't want that. So if you toggle that off, then it will just go back to the standard control center. If you toggle it on, it's gonna show you your home as well. Um, and then of course you have a few new ones here like sleep mode and all these kind of things. So you can add that in to make the control center better, but otherwise it looks the same as in iOS 13. So now the new call UI. So if I call this phone, normally it is going to ring on the top and that will be the new call UI. As you can see, here it is, it's going. So that's it, you can of course clean it up or swipe it to the top or whatever you want to do with that one. Well, these are just some of the features in iOS 14 that you can get if you get the developer profile. Now, I heard many people getting profiles from all over the place, so be careful on that one not to download profiles from people you don't trust. So be sure about that, otherwise they can get access to your system and you can have a bad day. I'll have more videos coming on all different features this week, starting from tomorrow. There will be a new video on some other features, but these are all the main features you need to know now to get started. These are of course the headlining features, so those are the most important. Also new videos on all other softwares including iPadOS, watchOS, and macOS coming soon because I'm really, really excited about those. Well, if you enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay notified when I release my next video. Also, if you missed my previous video on how to get iOS 14, then please click the card shown up there. Okay, take care, and I'll see you in my next video.